Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with chapter 1092 of One Piece, Kuma, the Tyrant's Holy Land Rampage. This chapter is absolutely hype. It starts off with a day before the event of Luffy vs. Kizaru. We are at Marijoa and Kuma is just rampaging through the city, causing mayhem, right? You gotta feel a little bit for the Celestial Dragons, right? If we didn't know how absolutely vile they were, we might feel a little bad, right? Like their food supply got destroyed, their kingdoms getting annihilated, but since we know how terrible and disgusting these people are, you don't really feel bad at all. We're, we're Team Kuma all the way, but then the GOAT of the Marines, Fleet Admiral Akainu shows up, and I get absolutely hyped, man. This is awesome. We haven't seen Akainu do anything since uh, the pre-time skip, right? Like, we've actually been seeing more anti-feats from Akainu, like him trying to burn a piece of paper unsuccessfully. But here, we get to see a named attack for the first time in a long time. We get to see the Hellhound, and Akainu is literally the only person in One Piece that is just casually blowing people's heads off and not just anybody's head right like pre-time skip he was blowing up whitebeard's head post time skip he just casually blows off kuma's head in his very first attack so this guy's a monster this guy's a beast they're hyping up a kainu and you gotta see it right he he goes from not being able to burn a piece of paper to just casually uh blowing up kuma's head and cutting off his leg, which is pretty insane. Like, in just two hits, he caused an insane amount of damage. At this point, Kuma knows he can't win, and he decides to use his pawpaw fruit to spank himself on the butt, moan a little bit, and fly away into God knows where. Most likely Egghead Island, because I do think we are going to see a Kuma Bonnie reunion, but Akainu doesn't know that, and Akainu's just like, where would you be going, you mindless Puppet, where are you going? Why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? Also, guys, don't forget to hit that sub button. Most of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, but don't worry, there is still time, guys. There is always time to hit that sub button. I'd really, really appreciate it. And we get a little flashback of when Akainu had Bonnie all tied up and he was gonna give her the lava D. No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, that's not what's happening. Um, he's just telling Bonnie what's going on with Kuma, that he is a human weapon of the Marines, and he is no longer her daddy. And Bonnie's just not having it. Bonnie's pissed. We cut back to Egghead Island, and the Sea Beasts are getting absolutely murked by the Pacifistas and the Vice Admirals. We get uh, a lot of the Marines arriving on Egghead Island, but they still are not able to reach uh, the top due to the laser defense system. And we get to see the two goats of this arc, Luffy and Kizaru, going at it. Luffy's in Snake Man, and Kizaru's first line is, I can see why you're the man who defeated Kaido, which just adds to the hype, right? And Kizaru is just casually blocking these Gear 4 Snake Man attacks, which... I guess isn't surprising because Kizaru is hyped up to be like the fastest man in One Piece. So Snake Man for him is, you know, he has to have his guard up, but it's it's nothing he can't handle. Like he's literally blocking Snake Man punches with his kneecaps, Bruh. which is pretty nuts and it, it's pretty awesome. And we get some dialogue with them. Uh, Kizaru is asking Luffy, why are you trying to protect Vegapunk? Like you're a pirate. What are you doing? And Luffy's asking him pretty much the same thing, but in reverse. He's like, why do you want to destroy Vegapunk? Like, what is your deal? I thought you guys were on the same side. So they're both asking um, some fun questions. And all of a sudden, Kizaru just pretty much teleports away at the speed of light. And Luffy's like, damn, this guy went far real quick. Like, he can barely see him. Like, this guy looks like he's miles away. And while Kizaru's, like, miles away, he's telling Luffy that he doesn't obviously want to unalive Vegapunk because they've known each other a long time so he'd appreciate if Luffy just stayed out of this and then we get the famous acceleration is power or speed is power depending on the translation Luffy's blinded and he gets kicked at the speed of light and it is awesome and we also get a flashback from Kizaru where he remembers when Vegapunk first created the Vega Force 1 and all of a sudden, it gets smashed to bits. Luffy smashes right through the core 
of the Vega Force One, absolutely destroying it and soon to blow it up. And Luffy gets sent straight through the stratosphere. He is, he broke through the barrier. He's, he got sent to the junkyard, baby. He's not even on the roof anymore. So who knows what's going to happen now? We got Frankie, Lilith, and Bonnie running away from the explosion. And then we get some dialogue with Kizaru and Bonnie. And he's like, wow, you've grown a lot, you know, in such a short amount of time, Bonnie. Maybe foreshadowing the, um, Bonnie's actually a little girl theory where she's actually using her fruit to be a teen or adult, but she's actually a lot younger than she seems. So that could be the case, but who knows. But we can infer that Kizaru and Bonnie do have a past, like he did know her at some point when she was younger. And Bonnie goes for a named attack called Age Skewer, which involves her grabbing a cable and swiping it at Kizaru, which obviously one shots kizaru and that's it the arc is over bonnie defeats kizaru psych no it does nothing and bonnie gets kicked into the stratosphere and she's also off the rooftop already so kizaru is pretty much just one shotting everybody at this point he's one shotted sent to maru luffy and now bonnie which is pretty insane right <laughs> And Frankie goes for a radical beam, so he's going to use a laser beam on a light human top-tier admiral, right? Uh, of course, that also one-shots Kizaru. Psych, no, it doesn't. It does nothing. Kizaru doesn't even acknowledge it. He, he just goes straight for Vegapunk. And at this point, it looks like Vegapunk did crack the code for the laser barrier that York had trapped them in. And it looks like they might be able to get away if it wasn't for Kizaru showing up in front of them and everybody absolutely crapping their pants. This is this is scary stuff, man. You got a top tier villain in front of all these all these guys. Everybody's scared. Where is Zoro and Luchi though? That that is the question. Are they fighting in another room? Like what's going on there? Uh where's Sanji at? Um, it's all like the low level straw hats and Vegapunk, and obviously they don't stand a chance against Kizaru. Um, and we get Kizaru saying, hey, uh, I'm here, your plans are foiled, and Vegapunk, this is very difficult for me to do, I'd rather not draw it out. Vegapunk is like hyperventilating, he's like, oh god, is this my time, this is it, it's over, my, I'm, I'm a goner. And all of a sudden, we get Gear 5, Giant Luffy, choking his chicken. Just kidding, he is manhandling Kizaru with one fist. Luffy is literally using an admiral as a plaything. Kizaru looks like an action figure in Luffy's hands and it is a sight to see. Very epic panel. You know, one one of these days I'm just going to do a top 10 panels of 2023 and this might be in the top 10, man. This is absolutely hype. Like who would have thought we would have seen this? You know, back at Sabodi Archipelago that we'd see Luffy just holding Kizaru like a freaking toy, man. That is awesome. Uh, and we got Kizaru sweating, man. We get a close-up of Kizaru sweating. There it is. This thing you do. Right? So depending on the translations, he does say different variations of the same thing. But it does seem like he has some intel on Luffy's powers. And we get a little preview of where Luffy got sent. It looks like he got sent down to the junkyard close to the giant robot because right at the end, the very last panel is the giant ancient robot awakening from his slumber. It looks like the the heartbeat of the warrior of liberation has awoken him from his slumber. And I wonder why, right? I, I, I wonder why he didn't wake up during Luffy versus Luchi. I'm assuming it has something to do with that panel where Luffy kind of smashed into what could be the reactor, right? Maybe that's the reactor that creates the mother flame. Who knows? Let me know what you guys think in the comments what that is. I have a feeling it's the reactor, right? Because why did the robot wake up at this moment in time? Some people say it could be due to Luffy turning gigantic and maybe the giant heartbeat is what awoke him this time because he didn't go into his giant form during the Luchi fight. So maybe that's what it is. Let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, drop a like and hit that subscribe button. If you guys like this kind of content, I'm releasing a One Piece live action reaction pretty soon. So watch out for that, guys. Much love. Peace out.